This video will be most effective if used in conjunction with a good quality textbook of embryology. This red Plato represents the heart tube roughly as we might see it on day 22 of development. At this end is the outflow tract. At the other end is the inflow tract. Future atrium, future ventricles. This is the left side of the embryo. We're looking from the belly. The inflow tract migrates to the left and toward the head to embrace the outflow tract. That's the inflow tract, future atria, future ventricles, and again the outflow tract. If we cut open the outflow tract, as illustrated here, we can look inside to better see what's going on. There it is, the outflow tract, a single tube. We're looking into the future left ventricle, right ventricle, and the muscular interventricular septum. There is the canal that leads into the future atria, the atrioventricular canal. So blood flows in that direction shown. What has to happen now is for the trunchoconal septum, shown here in blue, to separate the outflow tract in a spiral. Now, there's the right ventricle, the left ventricle. The right ventricle spirals into the uh, pulmonary artery, whereas the aorta connects with the left ventricle. The aorta is shown where my finger is pointing. Above that level of the finger is where the great vessels would be. Now let's turn our attention to the inflow tract and the atria and talk about how they partition. We'll slice through the atria so that we can see both through the outflow tract and the inflow tract. We're going to throw away this bottom piece or set it aside and look just in the top. And when we look inside, we see here is the future atrium. Those are the entrances from the inferior and superior vena cava. Here on the outside is the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava there. This is the future ventricle, the intramuscular septum, and the atrioventricular canals on the right and on the left. That is the superior endocardial cushion. It will soon fuse with the inferior endocardial cushion to form the intermediate septum. Now let's turn this around and focus our attention on the separation of the atrium. First, septum primum forms. There's the, now the right side and you see how septum primum is fused with the walls and with the endocardial cushion. Separate holes develop in septum primum. That's called ostium secundum. Ostium primum was simply the space below the curtain as it descended. Now, septum secundum forms, shown in green, and foramen ovale is a hole in that septum. That's a better look at foramen ovale. This probe can be inserted through foramen ovale and through ostium secundum. Together, these two holes create a valve that allows blood to shunt from the right side to the left of the heart. After you have acquired a clear understanding of the events depicted in this video, you will then be able to explain the embryonic basis for the majority of congenital heart defects.